Good morning, Carlos. Good morning, Ryan. Today I have a very special assignment for you. All the way in Brazil, we have two movies from the early 2000s that I need reviewing. Welcome to this week's Radical Retro Rewind. I am your host, Ryan, and today I have an amazing guest all the way from beautiful Brazil, Carlos. He is a writer, a storyteller, a filmmaker, and the co-creator of the webcomic The Adventures of Cadu and Vivi. Yes. Welcome. Thank you so much, Carlos, for doing this. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. So we became friends through our favorite show, Charm. You're right. We found out through that that we both love the Charlie's Angels movies. We do. We, we do love three women kicking ass. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the common thing. Yeah. Three women kicking ass. Exactly. Totally. So this time it's not demons. This time it's bad guys in general. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Like in tech, like in industries, they are bad and the angels are gonna get them. I love it. That's right. Strong women and these Charlie's Angels, I mean, they are basically superheroes they almost. They are. I consider them my superheroes, you know. Charmed, they are my favorite sisters because they have this dynamic and the powers. And Charlie's Angels, I consider my superheroes because I, of course, I love X-Men and I love the Marvel universe but Charlie's yes. Angels touched me when I was a kid, you know, and they are my superheroes alongside with Power Rangers and stuff like that. So, yeah. I love that. I love this. And now, this movie, the original Charlie's Angels, was released 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Can you believe it? I cannot. Where did the time go? I don't know. Man, I'm old. We're old. <laughs> <laughs> but we both look young, hopefully. I know yes. you do. Oh, thank you. Maybe I'm related to the Sanderson sisters, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> drink, That's right. Drink some potions. Is that what you did for Halloween? Did you drink a potion? Did a virgin light a candle? Yes, and took the spirit of several children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that for Halloween, Carlos, his sister, and his mother were dressed up as the Sanderson sisters, and they looked amazing. Oh. And all three look beyond you. Thank what you. What a gorgeous family. Thank you. And I'm Winnie. My mother is Sarah, and my sister is Mary. Now, did you all have a favorite sister, or did you go by? look yeah we go uh, we went by looks my mother is blonde and my sister is brunette with the uh, long hair so I'm the the one who who left but I love Winnie <laughs> and we sure the lead sister that way yes. you're in control you get to boss around the other two <laughs> you are correct I love it and see another three strong women they are bad but they are strong that's right it's it's always seems to be the magic formula of the three women together I think so and it's like they say it it's lightning in a bottle, you know, with Charmed, with Charlie's Angels, with Hocus Pocus, I think you can make this. It's it's magic, you know, you have to make it at the right time, with the right people, so yeah, I love it. That's so true, it really is. Okay, so this movie, the original Charlie's Angels, do you remember actually seeing it in the theaters and what you felt and what you thought when you originally saw it? Yes, when I was 11, the movie came out in 2000, and uh, I I don't believe I watched the first one in the theaters. I think I rented at first, yes. but I was obsessed with it. <laughs> Every time I went to Blockbuster, th this was my movie. This and Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I always rent the same movie every single time. I love that. And I was me mesmerized when the, the, the movie came out because I was young, so I, I wasn't aware of the TV show. I mean, I knew about it because my mother was a fan, but I never watched it. So this yes. is my first contact with Charlie's Angels and I was very excited because they were three different girls like a, a blonde a, a redhead and an Asian girl for some reason I got connected to these characters and I remember at 11 playing with my friends after watching the movie each one of us was an angel and we were playing and fighting and it was so much fun it, <laughs> I, I remembered like it was yesterday 
It was so much fun. While researching this, now tell me if this is true or not. Oh, okay. Is the Brazilian title for Charlie's Angels the Panthers? Yes, it's As Panteras, which is translated to the Panthers or the Felines. And the, the funny thing is the, the title is inspired by a old saying back to the 70s that referred to beautiful women as Panthers. No kid. Wow. Yeah, that has nothing to do with Charlie's Angels. It's like beautiful women. <laughs> Women, you know, the title. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so catchy here. We, we love it. The Most people in Brazil refer to it as that and only know it as the Panthers, or is yes. it also yes. known as Charlie's Angels? No, it's only the Panthers, like As Panteras. A wow. few people who, who, yeah, and a few people who, like myself, who understand a little bit better of English know that the original title is Charlie's Angels, but the other ones are just like As Panteras, the panthers and that's it i love what is a title that is a very sexy cool title yeah though, for it the, came for three from women. the 70s you know it's i believe it's a maybe a sexist title because it's like beautiful <laughs> women and but it's catchy even to this day like with the remake from 2019 it's always the panthers as Panteras. love that i'm so glad i got to ask you that oh yes I, i'm glad to answer oh and let me give back the question to you how were were you connected to the angels back in the 2000s? So I feel like I had a similar story to you that I did not see the original in the movie theaters. I wish I had now. Oh, yeah, the same. For some reason, I don't know why I miss not seeing that because I always loved going to the movies. So it's funny that I even missed it. But when it did come out on DVD, the same thing. I think I had rented it so many times that I just decided, you know what? I think it's time to buy it. Yeah, the same <laughs> thing with me, but it was VHS first. I was actually about to buy the VHS. And then this turned out to be my first DVD ever was was this movie. Really? So I want to say it's this or Practical Magic, but I believe it was Charlie's Angels. Well, both amazing, let me just say. I think <laughs> yeah. I think mine was some Batman movie. The one with Nick the, the one with Nicole Kidman. Oh that was it Batman Forever. Forever yeah. I think it was my first DVD. Or the Simone with Al Pacino. Wow, yes. I haven't thought of that in forever. Yeah, it, it was a great movie. Yeah, either one of those two. Okay, so now, this is the hardest question. Oh, okay. Bring it. <laughs> You're ready? Okay. I'm ready. Okay. So, no, I know we have discussed this in the past, but for the lovely people listening, your favorite angel out of the three. Yeah, this is always a trick question for me because it's a tie <laughs> between Natalie and Alex. Depends when I'm watching it. I think when I was a kid, it was Natalie because she was so fun and bubbly and beautiful. And when I, when I was older, I I think I understood a lot more of Alex and her sexuality yes. and her motivations being type A. So whenever I watch it, it's Alex or Natalie. I think it depends on my mood. What about you? See, this is where we're so alike. The same exact two. Oh. I'm sorry, Dylan. We're, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, we Drew, love you. You're the best. We do love you. But for something, the two of them, like Carlos is saying, Cameron as Natalie is just so sweet. She's so adorable adorable. She She's so funny. But then you do get that Alex comes off more serious, but she is hysterical and funny in her own way and so smart. She is so smart and quick as a whip. I, I love it. And I did, I never realized watching again that how many times there's scenes where men come up to her and she just she's like uh -uh. Them. <laughs> no go away it's so funny. and she does it so good so good <laughs> with the same note I was gonna ask you which angel is most like you what a great question yeah okay. I'm gonna have to say, I'm gonna go with Natalie. Yes, I think you're a Natalie kind of, kind of <laughs> girl, kind of, kind of boy. But I, I really do think Natalie. But what about you? What a great question. I love this question. I think I'm most like Alex, I would say. I'm more serious when I don't know the, the person. I'm, I'm a little bit mysterious. I'm type A. I'm very nerdy. I'm very focused. I'm wanna, I want to be the best. And, but I'm very funny and very, 
loose when I'm with my friends, with my family. So I think I would be Alex. And that perfectly sums up Alex. She does come off across as more, co- I mean, not cold, but I guess someone might call her more cold on the outside. But yeah. when she is with her friends. She's like the Victoria Beckham of the, <laughs> of the <laughs> angels. <laughs> <laughs> what a perfect example. <laughs> right? She's like the posh one. So, so true. And then I guess Natalie would probably be Baby Spice. Yeah, you think, Baby or? with... Yeah, I think Baby. And Drew would be... Would be Ginger with Sporty. Right, a perfect combination of the two of them. Yeah. Because Dylan is so... Um, she's a rebel, right. but she's... She really but is. But she has a... She's the heart of the angels. Especially, I feel like, in the sequel, we really got to see more of her story and how much she does love her sisters, the angels. Yeah, and always attracted to the dark side, like the villains. <laughs> She's in love with the, with the bad guys. And I love that they make that a joke in the second movie, that she always falls in love with the villains. <laughs> yeah, and she has a record of it. She has Knox, <laughs> she, she has Amherst, the Thin Man. The Thin Man. I can't wait to get to talk about the Thin Man. Oh, um, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> we figured that because we have two movies to go through, maybe that we would do just a, a run-through of both movies. Okay, go ahead. So the first movie really introduces our three beautiful, fun, smart ladies. 80s, As Charlie would say. Oh, that's right. Do you love this intro? Yes, I, I am obsessed with the intro. I think it's so beautifully put together. It's so smart. And the voice, I mean, John's voice, the, the actor who played Charlie, it's magnificent. Yes, what a fantastic. He did have the most amazing voice for this. He did. And both actually, and the sequel's intro as well. They just, we get to see more of the girls, more of their adventures that I wish that we had got to see fully. Yeah, and it's a, an homage to the, 70s uh, classic. There is a lot of the small scenes there. They're homage to the classic TV show, which is great. That's right. I think most famously would be the the angels in chains. The when angels in chains. Old. Like I'm not a yo yo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic. And Natalie Natalie says that's so cute. She's adorable. She's so adorable. And in the sequel, I believe the rollerblading sequence is an homage to an episode. And how fun is that? I wish we got to see more of that sequence. Yeah, me too. I agree. So, okay, so the villain in the first movie is Mr. Knox. But we don't know that, of course, in the beginning. No, what a We're, plot twist. What a plot twist. And especially for our poor Dylan played by Drew Barrymore. Poor Dylan. Always fallen, like we said, for those villains. <laughs> <laughs> she has terrible taste in men. They are good looking, but they are trash. <laughs> That's right. They're they're tr- attractive, but trashy. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. She's the Phoebe Hallowell <laughs> of the... <laughs> Of the trio. I'm so glad you brought that up because when you were mentioning before that she always goes for the bad guy, I was thinking Phoebe as well. Phoebe has the worst taste in men. She really does. But I do love Cole. I mean, Phoebe and Cole is my favorite storyline. Yeah, how sad that that didn't end up the way that we had hoped. Yeah, it's. I think in one end, it's really good because it shows that not every relationship is perfect and healthy because it was an abusive relationship. Yes. So I think... I think it was great to show that in the end, they were not meant to be together because it was toxic. Man, I do love Cole. I miss I miss them. I do too. I really do. And you know what? This actually leads to one of the trivia that I found. Supposedly, Alyssa Milano was in the running to be one of the angels at one point. I don't know if this is really? true. Really? I but... never heard of it. I've heard of Angelina Jolie and others. Yes. It would be fun too, but I do like my Lucy. It seems to be always Alex had had about 10 different names that were supposed to play Alex. True, yes. So I am glad we did get... Like I said, lightning in a bottle. 100%. Okay, so let's see. So villain-wise, so we do get Mr. Knox as one of the villains in the first movie, Eric Knox. True. And then we have his business partner, Vivian Wood. Oh, I hate Vivian Wood. (laughs) you kind of did you have that feeling too carlos in the beginning that she was the villain but he might have been innocent yes we watched it last night you a little bit earlier than yes than me but when i was re-watching it it was so fun to see natalie solving this murder like oh she did it (laughs) 
<laughs> and it was actually Vivian Wood. It was Vivian Wood, exact this whole time. This whole time. But you are correct. I, I believed she was the bad guy and Knox was innocent. So when the plot twist came about, I was like, oh my God. Because he does play such a geeky, innocent nerd that you would think, oh, he's just this nerdy guy that's adorable and she's pulling all the strings in the back. But no. Yeah, she's Both jealous of, of him of as a man and jealous of him as a partner. But it wasn't that's the case. Right. They were together. And we also have... Crispin Glover as the thin man, the mysterious assassin. Whoa, I love this character. So iconic. And without even saying a word, which is so difficult. Now, I had read that he actually had lines and it says that he decided, he asked the director, McGee, that it should be best to cut them. And I'm, I'm glad that they did. I'm so glad because it was more mysterious and dark and frightening. I remember watching as a kid, I was frightened of him. Very much so especially in the alley scene the which alley scene uh, is my favorite scene I have to say in the whole entire first I was movie. gonna ask well, one of them I was gonna ask you this which of the fight scenes are your favorite oh man okay such a great question so I will see the alley scene the alley although scene. Dylan tied to the chair is also a fantastic fighting scene it is definitely the alley though if I had to pick yes in the first one I agree with you I think it's the alley scene it's so very incredible Incredibly creative. It's inspired by Matrix, but at the same time, it's his own character. You know, the yes. bullets, the the kicks. It's and the angels working together for the first time. It's so magical to see. And they really, they're. I do love how they all, like you said, work together. They all, they just come together to fight, which is amazing. So they really do fight as one. Almost. Yeah. And I remember going back to the when I was a kid playing with my friends. We used to play this scene like every day. I got <laughs> bruises all over my body. I don't know how how I never broke a bone, but I was <laughs> but I was always bruised because we were fighting like invisible person and we were thrown through the wall and <laughs> to the floor. I don't know what my parents would think because I come back home with bruises, you know. Oh no. They might have thought you were going to be a, a stunt person in the yes. movies. In fact, my dream to this day is to is to be in an action movie. Movie. I love it. Well, you recorded, for anyone out there, Carlos recorded his own, basically, one-person action film, and he did so many cool, throw a punch, but then he would take the punch, and you were really throwing yourself around in that video as well. Yeah, it was so fun. I was inspired by the fight challenge that the girls did. Cameron, Drew, Halle Berry, all the action ladies. And I was very inspired by the video, so I decided to make a quick one myself. It's like 25 seconds so I was punching myself, kicking myself, and it was so much fun to do. And you had different wardrobes too, much like Charlie's yes. Angels. He had changed his wardrobe. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was a quick edit too, so it, it was very fun. When you were playing with your friend, would you take the lead? Were you the lead angel? J just like the Hocus Pocus Halloween, I was <laughs> I was the one who laughed because I played with, with a blonde friend and with an Asian friend. So I was Drew. I was Dylan. Oh, wow. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And I, I remember acting like Dylan. I was tough. I was rebel. And it was <laughs> it was the best. I remember fondly of those times. That is wonderful. I wish I would have had friends to play Charmed and Charlie's Angels with. Yeah. It was just me. We were going to be best friends if we were at the same age, at the same school, at the same country. Especially, and we had spoken about this once before, even Power Rangers, Power Rangers. we would have been doing it. All. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny because each of these projects I would play with my friends. So when Charmed, I was Piper. I was always freezing people. And Power Rangers, I was Kimberly doing the flips, doing the kicks. It was it was the best. I wish we could go back to those days so yes, much. Yes, I miss it. The innocence, the not taking yourself seriously. Better times, funner times. Yes, no COVID times. Oh, no COVID. Oh, that is the truth. Yeah. Where is the angels? We need a cure. Maybe they're working on it right now. Maybe they're going to come back for us. I think Alex <laughs> is doing something in some lab, mixing some medicine. <laughs> medicine and she's making muffins. Yes. Hard muffins. Hard muffins, muffins to kick coronavirus in the Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
And they're doing it angel style. Yes. Let's see. From the first movie, any favorite scenes that also jump out to you? We have the alley scene with the thin man, but are there other scenes that love, that you always think of, that make you laugh, that make you cry? Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not cry. No, I have several. I have the racetrack scene when they are pilots. Yes. Like Formula One pilots. I think it's amazing. It's one way to connect with my father because he was a huge, he is a huge Formula One fan. So I remember when I was, oh, how wonderful. yeah, I remember when we were watching Charlie's Angels together and he was always like, oh, this is a cool scene, the car scene. And I remember sticking to my head that it was so cool. And to this day, I watched that in mind. So it's, it's nice. And I love the helicopter scene. That's one of my favorites. What a great yeah. scene. What a great scene. I remember playing with my friends again, the scene and I was Alex when when the helicopter almost flips and she and she's gone and she's like <laughs> hanging with Natalie by her hand. It was I don't know how we played this scene, but I remember like I was <laughs> <laughs> my friend and I was like, Oh please don't hang, don't lose me. I wonder if you were hanging off one of they call it monkey bars. Yeah, here. probably. I yes, it's... I know what you mean. Probably something like that. So another fight which was a standout, Natalie's fight with Vivian in that I guess it would be like a bell tower. Yeah, I believe you're correct. It's an island and a bell tower. I think I think it is. Doesn't the building almost remind you of Zordon's <laughs> place in Power Rangers oh almost? God. It looks like Yeah, it's I never thought desert. about it, but it kind of does. So I'm looking at it, I'm going, wow, this kind of looks like Zordon's place. Yeah, and the remember the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie when this like vulture creatures attack. Yes. With the rocks and everything. And then they had that that warrior woman that <laughs> spun that stick around and they would make that, that whistling sound. Oh my god. And it was it, it was supposed to be Olivia Benson. <gasps> yes! <laughs> <laughs> Miss Marishka Hargate. Wow. <laughs> See, that's another movie I would love to talk about and review. Oh, please oh. do. Okay, so we also have Alec during that fight taking on the Thin Man, which is another fantastic it fight. It is. I wrote here in my notes, like, Natalie, it's such a bird whisperer because she find out where <laughs> Bosley was just by hearing the bird. And in the second one, she, did, I, uh, she does kind of the same thing with the bird poop. That's right. I'm so glad that they remembered that. That, um, for the two of the movies that they gave her that personality. Yeah, <laughs> and the bird plays a huge part in this scene because he's the one that warned Alex that the Thin Man is behind her and all the action begins. So I think it's a, it's a fun way to, to remember that <laughs> Natalie is a bird whisperer. The fourth angel could be the bird. Yeah, you are correct. They're, they both can fly, the angel and the bird. <laughs> right, they're both. These angels can fly, so can yeah. the bird. You mentioned earlier favorite songs there's so many songs in the the, the two movies but uh is there a favorite dance sequence is there a favorite song playing that you love that just makes you so excited when it comes first on? of all i have to say that i'm a huge fan of the soundtrack both movies i listen to this day when i'm jogging when i'm walking when i'm doing my exercise i'm always charlie's angels charlie's angels full throttle playlist go i'm a huge fan of the soundtrack and it's hard for me to choose one i i mean i I believe that Independent Woman is a classic because auto oh, automatically, yes. automatically I go to the Charlie's Angels movie. And uh, in, a fun fact, in 2013, when Beyonce came to Brazil to do a concert, I was so excited to, to see her. And I was like, please sing some Destiny's Child music. And she didn't. I was so bummed. But the show was great. Oh, I wish because that was a huge. Yes. Destiny's Child was, was huge here in Brazil. So I thought they are going to make a medley or something. But unfortunately, it wasn't the case. So I was kind of bummed that I couldn't have my Angels moment with Beyonce. Oh, that would have yeah. been amazing. That would have been so but fun. other than that, I I think from the first movie, oh, there are so many good ones. Do you love Heaven Must Be Mixing an Angel? Yes, that is one of my because favorites. Because I, I remember yes. the, the scene is so fun. And in the beginning, uh, Natalie, she's like, Eduardo, move me. And my my second <laughs> name is Eduardo. So I'm, I'm like, oh, she's talking to me. <laughs> 
she yeah. was. And that is, oh, that is hysterical. I love when she's dancing and the whole crowd is looking at her. And then all of a sudden they just keep, they go say, go, go white, white girl, girl. Yeah. go white girl. <laughs> I love that, like you said, they kept those moments alive to bring the character alive with the, the first sequence and then this one and the second movie when she's dancing to Last Dance by Donna Summer. Oh, so good. I mean, yeah, so good. That's one of the reasons that Natalie is my favorite every now and then because she's so much fun and she dances to this iconic music that, you know, has stuck with me for so long. When you mention the Donna Summer song, it takes me right to that scene. It I could picture her dancing around with the balloons. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and I love how innocent that she is when she has to go to the bathroom even she's just such so childlike i just think that's so adorable yeah. and she's so sweet she's so excited about she everything is. and i what i love about her is that she's very sweet she's very bubbly but when she got to the angel mode she's like she's like a yes. beast i i right here natalie's kicks have you seen her kicks it's like so athletic <gasps> she's kicking these dudes and to me she's like the most athletic of, of the three I think Alex throws a, a nice punch, especially in full throw. Yes. She's like punching everyone and and you and it's so effective. <laughs> you you kind of almost feel it, you know? Yes, you do. Oh, so that leads me to the question I was going to ask you. Thank you for um bringing up that because out of all the three, who do you think is the best fighter would it be natalie yeah i think it's uh it's a tie between natalie and alex again because dylan is a fantastic fighter but i think she's like more reactive you know she's like yes. when provoked she's very aggressive and stuff like that but i think alex is the one that articulates and thinks what she's gonna do and natalie switches very quickly you know she's like thinking but at the same time she's acting so i think alex and natalie are the the too strongest in terms of kicks and punches and martial arts. What do you think? I totally agree. Again, I feel so sorry for Dylan. <laughs> I'm so sorry we're leaving you out, Dylan, but <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. And even in the sequel, which we will get to, it's almost like Natalie went against Madison because she was almost the front angel, like the one of the better fighters. So she did take that yeah. lead in that fight with her, which I love. What a moment, I love that. right? Another what a moment. Yeah, so true. So Thin Man, let's get back okay. to the Thin Man. Now, did you ever think Think that we would see him again after the no, first movie. I thought that with the explosion of the island, they were gone, you know, Vivian Wood and the Thin Man were dead and that's it. Right. So that makes me believe that maybe Vivian Wood is alive and arrested. Oh, I don't know. Or she's waiting for the third, if we do remove the Charlie's Angels 2018. <laughs> yeah, she's plotting some revenge. <laughs> oh, that, that would be great. great. Yeah, but um, I never never think he would come back. I, I'm glad he, he did because he's fantastic. Now, but do you prefer him as the villainous thin man or the misunderstood hero, kind of? Or is he doing it because he's in love with yeah, Dylan in I some don't... sense? What did yeah, you make of I, that? I'm not a great fan of that. Oh my god, he's now the, the hero and because we get to see this kind of version of him let's say it like that towards the end the movie yes. right when the nun played by iconic princess leia she's yes when she says like oh he was uh, an orphan here in the orphanage and whatever it is and the haircut and stuff like that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when we get to see that he may be like a misunderstood character. So I, right. I, I'm not a great fan of that storyline. But as far as the, the beginning of Full Thrall, we still believe that he is like this evil being. So I, I prefer when he is the villain. I prefer it too, because like you said, we do get the story with the uh, Carrie Fisher as the nun, but it doesn't make sense with the first yeah, movie. Yeah. Although I will say with Charlie's Angels, it's almost like a, a real life comic book. It's anything can happen. That's the fun of it, I believe. Any anything can happen. It's so colorful, and even the villains can become heroes. Yeah, you, now. Are, you are so right. I remember being very bummed when people said, Oh, it's so unrealistic. This movie sucks, and stuff like that. Because, first of all, we're watching a movie that is like a superhero movie almost. So it's yes. not really 
real. Yes. We're not watching like a CIA based on life events, you know? We're watching some some entertainment. So I think it's super fun that it's over the top, very colorful. The the villains are over the top. The angels are over the top. So I think it's great. I love Mac G. I think a lot of people doesn't yes. like him because yes. of the mega spectacular thing that he puts on on his movies. But I really yes. do like it. I think it's very, very fun and inspired me as a, as a writer, as a filmmaker, because when I was watching it as a kid, I remember being so blown away by the colors, by the fighting, by the choreography, by the music. So I think he's a misunderstood director because he's like our generation in terms of he grew up with MTV, with with all yes, those backgrounds. Yes. So I think it's, it's a fun movie. Even Full Throttle, to me, like I watched Full Throttle a lot more than the original. And I know people are not very fans of the, the sequel. Yeah, I, I do love it. The, the, the spectacular thing that he puts through. I agree with you 100% because I feel like the criticism that people do give this movie is the fact that it is um, not believable, like you said. But that's where the fun yeah. is. And I don't think we would be talking about these movies 20 years later if it wasn't for how fun and over the top they were. You were right. I think that it, it's their own style, you know? It's not like the regular comedy. It's not like their regular action movie. It's a Charlie's Angels movie. That's right. It's a Charlie's Angel, And it's so different from other movies. And they really did have their own rules, I would say. Yeah, I guess. and it's fun because when I watch something new with like Mac G directing, like the babysitter for Netflix, I always go back to the Charlie's Angels because I, I can see like, oh, this is a color that Mac G would use. That yes. He loves yeah, those the colors. Cars. If you watch the babysitter and the sequel, he loves cars. He loves like explosions. And yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of explosions. There is a lot, especially in Charlie's Angels. Yes, oh my so goodness. It's fun to see that he's true to his aesthetic. You know what? I was one of those people that I didn't give the, the sequel as much credit as I should have because I have to say, rewatching it again yesterday, I enjoyed it so, so much more than oh, I remember. I'm glad that you was, said that because I love the sequel, man. I really, really do. You know what? I, I'm going to tell this between you and me and the people listening. I think I like it better than the original Right? Now. <laughs> because not in terms of the storyline, because of course, the story of the first, it's very, makes sense. Like, yes. But the yes. second one, we know these characters, you know, we love these characters. So whatever they do, we're like, yes, we're, we're, we got you. Oh, it's so true because like you're saying, we know those characters characters we and we could feel I feel like in the second one you could just see how much the girls love working together because they're they're smiling and they're always they, when they interact it's so natural and so real and I think that makes us love them yeah. even more that leaves me to the next question that do you have a favorite disguise or clothes they wore oh and there's so, there's so many, many of them okay this is a oh, trick question man. because they are both movies but that's true Okay, so maybe because I just watched it yesterday, but when they're doing the motorcycle scene and they're in those metallic outfits, I just love it because it looks like almost like battle gear like an yeah, armor it, it do sound like a, an armor and i do love when natalie and dylan are dressed like men in the oh, original one when they're yeah, undercover it's so fun. <laughs> what about you what are your favorite yeah my favorite costume like of all times it's the opening number from full throttle they are just stunning like natalie in this in all oh, white yes. and dylan all red and alex all black i think it's so iconic i think if they were to make like a Funko Pop or a, oh, or a, a Barbie yes. doll, whatever it is, <laughs> I want them to be in those clothes because they are fantastic. That really makes me wish that we had gotten even an action something, something in back in the day, a doll. Yes, I would have loved so, that. So, so perfect. That's one of the reasons that I really love Full Throttle because that opening scene, it's out of this world. It's so ridiculous, like an a helicopter on top of a truck <laughs> and the, and the absurd 
absurdity of it all. I, I'm drawn to this, you know? And the, the outfits are so cute. Like Natalie in all white with the skirt and the coat and Alex all sexy. Be beautiful. And she looks she does. beautiful. And Alex with the black leather. Oh, I'm, I'm amazed. And the skies. I think I really like the CSI disguise. Ah, uh, yes! When they are yes. <laughs> investigating the, the murder and they are like very serious and we're going to do the CSI. I think it's very cool. And back to the first one, I love the when they are in the racing suits, all blue with the, yes. with the red. Oh, oh. Yes, yes, with the red stars. I think it's very creative. Dylan especially. Dylan especially. Very with the gorgeous. Blonde in wig and the and the cleavage. Gorge. These women are gorgeous in this they movie. Are. Speaking about the outfits, before we move on, do you also love the three black outfits at the end of Full Throttle? Yeah, I do. Ending outfits. I do because I think th it's like the super secret agents, you know, that suits the yes, best with yes. Charlie's Angels. They are all black. They are in disguise, but they're not too flashy. And I think it, and it's the first I think I saw them because the cover of the VHS, they are in all black. So that's my first yes, contact they with, are. The, that's right. with the 2000s Charlie's Angels. So I think it's very iconic. Now I really wish we got those toys. Funko, please. please. If you're listening, make them <laughs> as their toys. Oh man, I hope we do. I, maybe for the 20th, maybe this will be the start of people going back to watch the movies again. Yeah, and people love an anniversary, you know? They are very big, especially in the US, like 20th anniversary. Yes. We got this, the reunion on the Drew Barrymore show with the three angels together, and it was so much fun. It's I so think they're going to do something to the 20th, like the, the month of November would have some surprise i hope so so maybe they even recorded something when they got together for the pilot of drew's show i want maybe or make a fun scene like it was a sequel i don't know i i'm i'm excited to see what they're gonna oh, do a sequel oh that would be fantastic like the one that drew made with adam sandler like they were in their characters from 50 first dates yes 50 first dates maybe something like that they are oh, playing angels again i don't know fingers, fingers crossed, crossed. And Drew is very invested in doing this. They, she's making the scream videos for her channel and her and her talk show. How exciting! Yeah, she's doing amazing with that. Yes, talk and, show. and she's so sweet. I I do believe she had the time of her life doing both of Scream and Fifty First Dates and Charlie's Angels. She's like a sweetheart. You could totally, exactly, you could tell with her. We're ready for the sequel. Be okay, so let's go full throttle then, all the way. Bring it on, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> There was web cartoons before the premiere of Full Throttle that set up the storyline of how they got to where they are. Yes. Do you remember anything besides how, how terrible bad it was. they might have been? <laughs> <laughs> I do remember, but very, very little because it was at a time where internet was like at the so yes, slow. it was so slow. And uh, I remember seeing some some images and some stuff related to the movie. And even then, I thought, oh, this looks weird. <laughs> so I, I wasn't very interested, and in I was so excited for the movie, but but not for the comics or whatever it was. I, I remember it was like a wallpaper for your desktop. <laughs> Yes, I remember that as well. It was bad. <laughs> I wonder if they someone has them somewhere. Oh, probably. And they're not lost to the internet forever. I, w I was always hoping that they were going to put them on the DVD, but then they never ended up. So then I just figured, okay, Maybe they're gone. they never existed. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe they shouldn't have existed. <gasps> and then we... <laughs> We do have to make a quick mention of the Charlie's Angels oh video my game. God. Which... <laughs> It would it would have so to be like uh, it would it would have been so fun if made properly, but I yes. I don't I don't think I even got a chance to play. I don't think it was released in Brazil. I have to to check, but I remember seeing it online and stuff like that. But no, I never played. And when I saw years and years later on YouTube how <laughs> it was. I was like so freaked out in a negative way. One hundred percent. 
Um, but you're right. The the movie and the should have led to like a really great action game. But no, yeah, it was the, the graphics it was terrible. Was terrible. The characterization of the girls were terrible. I think it was a, just a mess. And from what I remember, everyone kind of looked the same. You would be a different angel because I did actually rent this from Blockbuster. Speaking of Blockbuster, the good old days. I was so excited to rent this, and then I got home, and oh my goodness. <laughs> Because <laughs> I believe the plot was something about someone was going around and taking monuments here around the world. So like a, they took the Statue of Liberty or something. It was very much like Carmen Sandiego. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's in a perfect right? example, Carlos. <laughs> perfect. Um, and the girls, they were just the graphics. They were all kind of really thin, and there was they were in bathing suits for the first it was, it terrible. was terrible and they were it ugly really <laughs> the angels are beautiful <laughs> yes they really yeah. were ugly terrible oh my god but that was part of the promotion so we got the web comic slash cartoon and then we got the video game and that all came around the time of full throttle so charlie's angels full throttle carlos what are you thinking what do you feel scenes that stick out to you first of all i was obsessed with full throttle because i remember i just got cable in my house like a uh, three years before i believe so i used to watch the e channel and they were playing the trailer yes. like every single day that i recorded on my vhs so i would watch like all day every day until the the movie came out which i think thinking now it was like a huge spoiler because they show Madison Lee as the yes. bad guy in the trailer like but it was an amazing trailer besides that so I watched and watched and watched it like until the premiere and I remember like I said the internet was very very slow very in the beginning but I did create it a website like a blog that I would oh, that wow. I would post like pictures and behind the scenes and I was so excited to see the movie and when I I did I was like blown away my at that point I had no jaw anymore <laughs> I was so impressed because I used to love this character and seeing them again it was like almost like revisiting a favorite person of the family you know and I was so used to watching yes. Charmed like every single week that I had to wait three years for watch another Charlie's Angels so I was like please give me my Charlie's Angels movie oh we again we would have been amazing yes, friends would. watching charmed waiting for more charlie's angels and i remember <laughs> i was at my grandmother's beach house when the movie came out so i i went to the theaters there with a friend and when i get back to my my home i watch it again with my friends from the city and i think i watched it like probably two or three times in the theaters it was a marvelous experience for me and what it's a beautiful movie to see in theaters it's yes. such a so much colors. Oh, the yes. colors. The explosions, the outfits, the music. Uh, so you have Charlie's Angels on Blu-ray, the original one. See, I just have the DVDs, but I could only imagine how gorgeous they, they must do. look now. They are very vibrant colors. Even the first one that I, I have the first one in every single media I have in VHS, I have in DVD, I have in Blu-ray and I have the the original soundtrack. So it's very fun to see like how the evolution of the quality from the VHS to the Blu-ray. And you're right, the color is perfect. It's so vibrant and so so alive. So alive. And in full throttle, they just went they for went everything, like I feel like. Another <laughs> world. And I think it's so fun because people like said the story is so confusing and it is. It's like not a, a linear storyline. There are very ramifications. Yes. But I, I'm, I'm there for the fun, you know, to see the, the action, to see the fighting, to see their, their sisterly love. So I'm not very interested in the halo rings i mean obviously it, it's a fun plot and storyline but but i think yes. I, i'm more excited to see them again no matter what circumstances 
I agree with you. Even if they were just doing their daily life, like we did get to see with Natalie moving with in. Yes, with Pete and Dylan worrying about losing her if she gets married. I would have loved just to have a movie about them just being friends yeah. and <laughs> hanging out. I, I, I feel the same because they were this entity together. You know, they could be fighting, but they could be talking about boys. And we would we would be and fine with that. They do. I love. I love when they talk about yes. boys. <laughs> it's, it's a it's amazing because you know people criticize the movies too because they say they are for men just to be sexually attracted to. I believe that is just. I think that's wrong because yes, they're using their sex appeal, but they're using it to full men who think that they are only just yeah. for sex but really they are so smart and they're using against that them. against the You're men so right because of course the, uh, when they did the movie is 2000 2003 it was like a male perspective of the yes. of the woman's yes. body and whatever so but even back then i think they had this the way that they they are portraying themselves it's very like empowering like you said because they are sexual but they know that they are yes. doing this to fool man and that's what makes it even better even when they do the kind of like pussycat doll oh, dance in the it secret is. <laughs> and a fun fact to that scene because they dance to the pink panther theme and the yes, pink panther yes. is uh, here in brazil oh the pan a pantera yes. cor de rosa which is as pantera so oh. it, it was so much like a great thing combined you know the pink panther with the panthers so we were very excited that is amazing now especially knowing that that is the title it, it's even better then yeah oh wow i remember when i watched i think it was the first or the second time the audience was like oh my god the pink panther <laughs> they were so excited to the that sequence well speaking of brazil you have a fun fact about one of the male actors yes, in one of the villains Miss Randy Amherst, the surfer. Oh yes. yes, it was. It was played <laughs> by our Brazilian actor Rodrigo Santoro, which is a huge Brazilian star. And we were so excited when we learned that he was going to to the U.S. doing to make his first American film. And I was wow. so thrilled because it was going to be Charlie's Angels, my favorite movie. What double excitement! Double excitement. Yes. But the thing is, when the movie came out the audience was so disappointed because he doesn't have a single line. Okay, I was just about to say that. He didn't... <laughs> The poor guy had no lines but at, at all. at the same time, thinking today, I think it's very like the thin man. He was mysterious and, and dark in his own yes. way. He didn't have to say a word. But to us, it was like a bummer because we wanted to hear him saying words in English. Like, oh my God, how is he's going to sound? And he doesn't say it all. That would be such a bummer waiting yes, for all I that. So he is he currently making movies yes. now still and uh, he's a huge star in in america he's in the he's of course after charlie's angels he did 300 love actually all oh, three oh love actually that's and right he was, oh my goodness i forgot he was in the that. oh my god i forgot the the show's name Westworld and what i you know i never saw the the series but i hear people yeah love he that was show. on lost back in the day and lost wow he really so he crossed yes, over he he's more working on the state but every now and then he he makes like a a movie or a soap opera here in brazil so we all speaking of men we also get justin Thoreau, Thoreau yes as seamus o'grady oh <laughs> the villain those abs <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing an interview with him that he said he was going to work on the movie, so he had to be in shape. I, I think he was he must be so miserable because his body is so ripped. I think there's not a single fat in the body. Not at all. You're right. He's like muscle, basically, with skin. He is a thin man. He's not like a buff, athletic man. He's thin, but all oh, this his body yes. is very pure muscle. And what makes it even, um, what should we say, shine even more is when they escape that fight scene and he's against the fire that Dylan and Alec, they make that fire to get away from him at one point. 
point and he glistens. Oh my god. <laughs> His- the action scene from the ship, it's one of my favorites from Full Throttle. Can we talk about that? Yes, please. That is an amazing, that's my I think favorite. That's my favorite fight scene from this movie. Agreed. First of all, they Agreed. start fighting in the dark, which is amazing. Yes, and how Very smart. smart. And then when the lights came up, they, oh my god, it's an amazing sequence. I think they worked their butt off to hit every single choreography right because it's so well done. Speaking of bruises, they must have had bruises oh, everywhere yes. after filming this movie. <laughs> I remember, I think it was in the Drew Barrymore show when Lucy said that she was preparing for the role and she was like, okay, I got this. It's going to be fine. And the next day she couldn't walk. I believe, <laughs> I believe it. it I believe because it because they were fighting, man. Didn't she say they had to pull their legs up with the wires almost? Yes, they did. <laughs> they, if you saw, if you see the the behind the scenes stuff, they their legs are in the wires and it's it's otherworldly. So, you know, people will often criticize this movie as well as something you mentioned earlier. It is very Matrix-like, but I believe Charlie's Angels made it its own thing. Yes, they're floating, they're doing the slow motion, they're avoiding the bullets, but the way that they do it in Charlie's Angels is just different and, and more fun yeah, it's and unique you know they have their own logic of stuff they have their own gravity of stuff and it works yes and it works <laughs> because I, as an audience member i buy it you know they are this superhero chicks and they do it all without guns which is another thing that they're so strong that they don't even need a firearm which is so to... smart because that's the twist that drew Barrymore came up with when she was trying to yes. to remake the 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 show and I think it's so smart because it was at a time when Matrix was big and it's new you know when you are remaking something I think you have you have to bring something new to the table because if you're gonna yeah. show the same thing better do a sequel better do another another season whatever it is so I think it was like so fun that these girls are martial art experts and they are fighting but not actually killing the dudes right and I think it's smart and it's also a, a fun thing when the Madison Lee character comes up because she is an old school angel. Read right? my mind. So she used Read the gun. Mind. She's trying to kill the, the angels, the partners. She's like this evil villain. I think that having a fallen angel, as they would say, as the villain was such a great idea. Like you said, they did give it away before the movie premiered unfortunately with the trailers and the TV commercials, but I love that idea of someone who was just as tough back in her day and now she's turned evil and she wants to be the lead. I think that's I think a great, that's a great idea. idea too. Especially as Demi Moore. Yeah, and, she, and it was the return of Demi Moore to movies because she was like away yes. from Hollywood from a very long time. And then she came back with this character that's over the top and it's a villain. I think it's so cool because in the first Charlie's Angels we have Vivian Wood but she's like only a third of the, yes. the villains and she's not even the strongest one. She's like, she's a villain. Right. She's not an expert in martial yeah, arts. Yeah, she's not or... like this big threat. You know, she's just this awful person. But Madison Lee is like so iconic because she's an angel. She was an angel. And now she's the, like fallen angel. And she's smart enough. She knows different things. And a matter of fact, when she says that back in her day, they use the guns. I, I think that was such a great little funny thing to say, like, like a throwback to the original show and how they used to. Use and I think it's so smart that she knows how Charlie would think yes. when she killed the angels she goes back to, uh, to the agency and confronts Charlie and I love this scene because first of all they have when she's going out we have this these pictures behind her if you pay attention and yes, they are yes. the the original angels from the tv show you know not many people notice that but yes carlos is right if you look in the back they do have the original angels uh remember seeing tanya roberts and i think cheryl ladd yes i think it was cheryl i was trying to look this time as well and i'm like i think yes I yeah, think it is cheryl because ladd. we can't see exactly but uh the tanya roberts picture it's i, I remember because it's an iconic picture of her but the the others it's kind yes, of blurry you can't really pick point but i think this scene is super fun because of this easter egg and the, the actual actual cold is very amazing madison lee very pissed like i was never good i was great yes with her tears in her eyes and then when she shoots the charlie speaker um, box speaker oh, box so many so feelings good. 
so right so many feelings we knew that our angels probably weren't going to be dead at that moment but they do do such a good job with them laying there for tending that they're dead and you're like oh my god yeah what is and the bulletproof happen? vest was kind of a smart idea to introduce in the first in the in the beginning of the movie because later on when you think oh my god they yes. got shot they probably dead they're using the vest those vests were uh perfectly sized especially for natalie's uh yes. outfit <laughs> it was low enough not to be seen from her uh <laughs> the it outside was so smart and so campy but it's so it's so fun and when natalie is walking away and she's dragging her shoe behind her <laughs> i mean these girls are very very hilarious and the explosions like uh, when they are fred astaire and they're solving the mystery and the car explodes <laughs> and dylan goes like oh i think she's trying to kill us <laughs> It's so fun. I mean, these girls are very... I don't think they got... I, I, besides Cameron, I think Lucy and Drew doesn't get their, their comic... The credit. Their comic credit. Perfectly said. Because they are hysterical. They are super funny. And linking to the Madison Lee character, I one of my favorite scenes from Full Thrower is the ending. When they are at the big theater and the car just went through the wall. And I think oh, it's yes. so much... Like, how can I put it? It's dramatic when they are, like, so brilliant bruised and it's the end of, of the movie and there's something sexual maybe going on like with Madison Kiss yes, and Natalie yes. and Natalie says oh my friends are here to rescue me and the final fight scene is so iconic again to the Natalie kick she kicks Madison in the face and this, so good she, she does, does the, the best, best kicks, kicks. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I love this quote as well it's so campy but it's so fun like enjoy heaven go to hell yes and then she falls down and she gets in engulfed into flames and fire it's oh. so cool but maybe she's alive too we saw the thin you man you never explode, know maybe so. she's plotting something with Vivian Wood <laughs> we got our we got our bird movie plan here so, okay so speaking of changes that happened in the second movie for Bosley which one do you prefer out of the two Bosleys that we did get I think I prefer Bernie Mac's version because he's so funny. And yes, I'm with you. And Bosley with has you, yes. more screen time, I think, because in the first one, he's just like, okay, I'm going to connect you with Charlie and he gets kidnapped. And I, I don't think we got to see a lot of Bosley. And uh, of course, there is the party scene when he's like the, <laughs> the oh, fighting yes. scene with Corwin. <laughs> but besides that, he's not very much <laughs> memorable, you know? And I think in the second one, they You're have right. this clever idea to make a Bosley family thing that an another person or another man of the family becomes another Bosley. And I think it's it's fun because Bernie Mac is, was hilarious. And I think it was it was a nice touch yes, to was. bring another Bosley. I agree with Carlos. I think as much as I love the original Charlie's Angels, although now I've confessed that Full <laughs> Throttle is Yay. my favorite. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Bernie Mac, he brought such a, a, a more fun to the role, especially even with the Irish, he's pretending oh, to be so Irish. It's so fun. And he gets every person that he acts with, it's he has chemistry with. Like with the angels, with Shia yes, LaBeouf. Yes, he does. With the, his... Shia, yes, which is another thing. I forgot all about so Shia young, being right? in this movie. Oh, oh my God, a baby, a baby. I, I, so are we to assume that he would grow up to be a Bosley yeah, it's gonna, then Yeah, it would well. be fun because he's very attractive <laughs> these days, Shia LaBeouf. Yes. And I think yes. it would be a, a great fit for him to be like this young Bosley to be cool and with technology I think it would be a great great new Bosley okay so if you were to come up with a plot if, if Drew Barrymore came to you and asked you what would you want to see in a Charlie's Angels 3 is there something that you always wanted to see the girls do uh, some kind of adventure that you would have loved to have seen. Mm, I never really thought about it, but um, yeah, you got me there. I'm sorry I put you on the spot because I didn't <laughs> even think of any. <laughs> I just was thinking of that but, as we were going. I was but like, like I said, whatever they did, I was going to watch because I love this character. So they would, I don't know, be in a bitch. Uh, searching for a uh, treasure and I was yeah okay I'm done Ooh. with it anything with these girls so the rumor was that we were to get Charlie's Angels 3 and 4 originally although they're saying due to success of Full Throttle not being as they had hoped it was cancelled I still to this day wish that we had gotten at least one more the trilogy the, the right? three just to round out yes with our girls the, the original, original girls, girls yes 
I I think so. And it was a, it wasn't a big flop if you consider to no right. I I wouldn't consider it a flop either. I it mean, did it did well. well. I think it it got mixed with the bad reviews and the not so great box office that they decided to to pass. But I hope to see those girls again. And it was an unfortunate because if you watch another like series like Star Wars and Star Trek, they are always bringing yes. the characters back and they're but of yes. course they are all yes in their majority men like harrison ford and tom cruise with mission impossible and when it comes to the girls they're yes. like oh no they're too old we're gonna do another uh, a remake or whatever it is with 20 something girls which is something that it bothers me with charlie's angels 2019 because first of all i'm not i didn't hate the movie but i think it yes. wasn't charlie's angels because they didn't have the chemistry you know the the three girls right yes i agree i i finally actually watched it and i i really do feel like kristen stewart was i enjoy her i mean i'm i'm not the biggest fan of her but i do feel i don't know that uh, she didn't really have chemistry with really any of them and, any and of if them. you think about it she is the best part of the movie she's very she is the sad part because she's very charismatic the character is super fun but she doesn't have much chemistry with the ella Bolinska character and with the naomi scott no. and i think what got in my opinion which was a, a bad thing for the movie is elizabeth banks was so like narcissistic she was like oh yeah, i'm the actor yeah, i'm the director yes. i'm the screenwriter i'm this i'm that and, and bosley, and bosley. And she <laughs> made it all about her even the promotional pictures and videos if you if you are gonna pinpoint it's all about her it's oh yes. it's charlie's angels plus bosley it's charlie's angels plus elizabeth banks i think she tried to do something Right. with which female empowerment all the the girls are kicking yes. butt the bossly the agents going globally but i think she focused too much on herself yes. on her name if yes. you watch the charlie's angels trailer it's like from elizabeth banks writer elizabeth yes, banks 100%. directed by elizabeth banks starting elizabeth <laughs> banks i mean <laughs> It's not a Charlie's Angels movie. It's a Elizabeth Banks movie. It should have been yeah, called or, Bosley. Or Bo Elizabeth Bosley. Banks Angels. Yes. The new franchise. So, uh, that's my concern with the movie. There, It's not a, a bad movie, but it's not a Charlie's Angels movie, in my opinion. And, and you know, I, I think the problem as well was after it wasn't doing well, what turned people off was, again, Elizabeth Banks saying that it was because men didn't want to see women in power, which, I mean, I'm sure there are men that are terrible like that, but I don't think that was the issue with this. I don't, don't think it was promoted well. People wanted the original girls yeah because still... if you think about it when uh, a movie with a female lead is 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 going to premiere another women are always celebrating i remember when i think it was wonder woman yes. i remember Halle berry praising i remember i think reese yes. Witherspoon like go go see the movie go and with charlie's angels none of these girls were promoting and i thought <laughs> oh, okay no. i think it's because the, a the movie sucks or i don't know they have a yes. problem with elizabeth banks i don't know right <laughs> i think when true. they have like a female action <laughs> movie they are always supporting each other with it's charlie Theron, it's halle berry whatever it is and with charlie's angels none of them were promoting it and i think it's because the story was was weak and i do think it almost it looked very generic from the trailers as well if people were just gonna see oh this is charlie's angels but it just looked like a, an action movie a generic action movie with female leads it didn't say charlie's angels like you're saying it yeah because Char charlie's angels it's like so much about the chemistry if you go back to the original tv series like the the three angels they are yes. so iconic and when farrah fawcett left even cheryl ladd was so big and they were and yes, they were so iconic to this day 40 something years later they are still remember as as angels and drew cameron lucy as well but if you go back to the 2011 version they tried to do they're like you don't 
even know who, who they are. And then, oh yes, that was and another. The, and last yeah. year's version, <laughs> that the was same. Another one. They probably remember Kristen Stewart, but the other two girls, they're not angels in our minds. Right. Oh my goodness, that TV show. I'm so glad you brought that up. I was so excited for yeah, when that so they announced because that. Um, Drew was a producer. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what got me excited as well. Yes, exactly. But what happened? <laughs> what happened to that? <laughs> but it's funny because I I remember reading someone saying, "Oh, I think the 2011 TV show was better than the movie." And I kind of not that <gasps> I agree, but it was more similar to Charlie's Angels, I believe. The this version because yes. they were in yes. disguise, they were with the new Bosley, the new hot Bosley, and it was uh, of course oh, it was yes. a bad show, but I think <laughs> it it has that that Charlie's Angels element mostly because of Drew Barrymore as a producer and uh, the 19 version. I think it, it it's not the it's not the same. Not at all. Not at all. Do you think if they had brought back one or two of the original angels or had maybe Dylan be the Bosley you think it would have helped any or is it still yeah I think it was it was not going to be a, a hit because of those of those aspects I think it, it was better that the girls didn't have any involvement with it yes in the, in long, the long run, run it's I'm... better for for them to be like connected to their own movies and their own legacy and do you think that is the problem it's almost like our our charmed girls when they say that they're too old to come back let's say with the you know the reboot of charm that's currently going on originally people were saying well the actresses are too old do you think that's part of the issue now that there's gonna say well cameron diaz did retire but do you think they'll say oh these actresses are too old to do action but reality they probably yeah, move better I than think we do. It's, it's true. They consider old for ex executives and people who, who run the, the studios. But I think if you go to to an audience point of view, we will, we would love to see those angels again. Maybe they wouldn't be yes. the athletic, how they wouldn't be so athletic as they were like 20 years ago. But I think the story could be done in a way that we would appreciate to see those girls, you know? what I mean? Oh, 100%. Even if they didn't do all their own stunts, uh, the technology is so yeah, they great could be now the, that they the, could make their face on a woman, yeah, right? A stunt woman or something. even be like the leaders, like a Charlie version, and had some new girls to be like the new angels, but they were the official angels, you know, yes. like running the stuff and researching. Yes. And I think if they found a way to do that, it would be a hit. But, but going to the premise that they were the lead and the new girls were helping them. And that way we could have introduced the um, the new angels and then possibly they could have then spun off on, into their future, yeah. their own movies that I way. Agree. So out of all the girls, the question remained in full throttle. Who do you think did retire first, mm, Carlos? That's a good question. I think probably, I think it would be Alex. Yes, Ooh, because she said, oh, okay. oh Natalie's gonna marry it and she's gonna leave us. But seeing that she's so like independent and she has her own mm -hmm. life she she's very strong in her own way i think she would be the first to leave if i don't know she decided to change her her life or even decides to open a, her agency whatever it is i think she would be the first to leave because Natalie and Dylan were so like codependent ish. Yes. Oh, you're so smart. So I totally. Can see Alex yes. being the first to leave. That's such a thoughtful question. On the surface, I would have said, oh, yeah, maybe it would be Natalie because she probably would get married, but that doesn't automatically mean that she would retire per se. But yeah, I like your idea of Alex yeah, leaving I think first. It makes sense to her character. And are we going to say that Dylan probably would be like she showed in in the uh, the future with the different angels? I feel like she probably yeah, would I think she be would. the longest. And to to link with the original Charlie's Angels, I think she would be the Kelly Garrett. To the, oh, perfect. Who we did get to see. In in, all the, the cameo, which I think it's so, yes. so good. Okay, so my question for you, are we to believe that that is... Is that really, is that in her, Dylan's mind? Is that a ghost? Is that a memory? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's it's open to interpretation, you know, which I love. You can maybe think that she was there and conveniently was there to, to give a, an advice. 
But I do think that it was <laughs> like in Dylan's mind because right after the the talk, she sees the magazine that says the the Cosmo yes. horoscope, and she figures it out there that it's Madison. So I think it's all in her head. Like she was, she she's having a conversation with a former angel, and then she sees the whole picture. So I think it's in her imagination, but it can be open to interpretation. And do you also get the feeling that Kelly might have been a mother figure for Dylan in the way that Charlie is almost like a father figure for her? I mean, not that he's not for all the girls, but I feel like Dylan almost has like that surrogate family with Charlie as her father figure. Maybe Kelly was her mother Yeah, figure. probably. Yeah, if you think about it, if you think that they have some sort of connection with former angels... Like when Natalie saying to to Madison, "Oh, you're my favorite angel." I, I I do believe that Dylan's favorite angel was probably Kelly. And they get a newsletter, I believe. Yeah, so so smart. So that was this week's radical retro rewind. Thank you so much again, all the way from Brazil, Carlos. Thank you so much for doing this and talking this these amazing movies with me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm. I'm now doing the Lucy's hair flip. <laughs> <laughs> She was the best doing the hair flip. She really was. <laughs> So I'm so glad to to be a part of your project. Congratulations. It's great. You are a great host. Thank you for having me. And I have to thank him because he is one of the people that really pushed me and told me I should give this a go. So I really do owe a lot of thanks to Carlos and his, just really his um, encouragement. So thank you again. Thank you. And Carlos, where could people find you if they're interested? And if you're interested in seeing some gorgeous pictures, some amazing filmmaking. Oh, thank you for the, the compliment. You can find me at Instagram. My handle is at Cadu Luongo, which is C-A-D-U-L-U-O-N-G-O. And you can reach Radical Retro <laughs> Podcast, one word on Instagram. Thank you again. Hopefully we will have you back. Maybe <laughs> you have to wait and listen. <laughs> thank you again. Thank you. <laughs>